I wanted to take a minute to talk to you guys about different color options and how to select colors and come up with colors for your web maps as well as for your websites themselves. And there are two really cool tools. Um, well, basically one's not super cool, but it's, it's definitely useful. When you are creating colors for your website, um, memorizing the hexadecimal, hexadecimal colors is yeah, a little bit complicated and difficult at first, and actually there's no real need, need to memorize them. You probably will over time. But if you go to the W3Schools HTML color picker, or if you go to Google and just type hex picker, which is easy to remember, uh, it'll be the first option. And here what you can do is you can select pretty much any color under the sun, and get darker shades of those colors um, by clicking over here. And it will provide you the um, hexadecimal, basically, code, if you will, RGB code of the color. And you can just copy and paste it right into your CSS file. So this is a really useful tool for quickly coming up with um, decent color palettes and, and color options. And I highly recommend you use it. Just there are, there are many other sites that do this as well, but obviously W3 Schools, it's linked right up here. You can suddenly go to the CS3 documentation and look up codes while you're at it. Another option is Color by Adobe, which I think was always called Color, but it used to be spelled Cooler to be cool or something. There you go, Adobe Color is now Adobe Color. Um, but at least it's less confusing now. So color, C-O-L-O-R, apologies to my British colleagues and Canadian. But um, here you can make your own color palettes and basically get the hexadecimals pretty quickly. You can play around with these. You can, in the textbook I speak about these different um, color rules. Well, basically, it'll help create them by default here, and then you can play around with them a little bit more. And... Um, basically tweak these. So a really cool tool to experiment with the different color combinations discussed in the book and um, start really designing websites that by default have good good color combinations. Color Brewer is awesome for representing quantitative data and also qualitative data, thematic data of some sort with uh, making sure that the human can interpret and perceive differences between the values. That doesn't mean it's always the most aesthetically pleasing. This is more about aesthetics. But before I end, one other thing I need to mention about color, and actually probably it's, it's coolest thing in my mind, is if you see a map, a painting, or a photo, if you have a photograph where the colors in it are just vivid and they work really well together, you can create a color palette from it. So I'm going to go here in my, let's go to my website and in my images folder I have a sunset photo that I for some reason really like let's say I can load it in here and it will create a color palette from it and if I'm not totally happy with the colors it chooses I can move it a little bit I can tweak these and get slightly more variation that's a little um, we can go here and make colorful the bright colors, muted colors from this photo, dark, custom. So we can do all of this. We can hit save. You will need an Adobe login or an Adobe ID, I guess they call it, and that's free. It's free to have an Adobe ID. They just charge you for most of their software, but not color yet. That may change. Who knows? Um, and then once you have this here, you save it and you can access it at any time. You can share it with others. And you certainly can download the, the hex information. So you can use this also in a lot of other products, um, any product that uses Adobe Swatch Exchange. So Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, you can create things like that. But a great tool, a great resource. If, if you see an old map that you love, snap a picture of it on your phone, upload it here, and you can steal the color palette. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.